Hey there, Kazen here, and welcome back to Always Doing. We have reached the last month of the year, so it's a great time to do the end of the year book tag. The original is by Ariel Bassett. I don't think anyone has tagged me, but that's okay. It does never stops me. So let's just jump right in. Question number one. Are there any books that you started this year that you need to finish? No. I don't believe in like giving myself I need to finish or I have to finish or that kind of stress about my reading because this isn't a job. It's not like I'm in school. It's not like I have an assignment or a deadline. I'm doing this for fun. So no, there's nothing I need to finish. Are there books I would like to finish? Mm -hmm. I did a whole video about it right here. Question number two, do you have an autumnal book to help you transition to the end of the year? And many of you, especially those of you in the Northeast that are getting walloped with snow right now, are probably laughing at the idea of autumn, but here in Tokyo, the fall leaves are still here and it is still very autumnal feeling. It's why I have my fall leaf little thingy back here. And yeah, so this is actually a valid question for me, but I don't have anything particularly autumnal on the list. Although what I do consider more autumn type reading is stuff that's maybe fantasy, something epic. I usually don't go gothic and I don't do, do creepy, but more atmospheric, like The Night Circus is a great autumn read for me. Question number three, is there a new release that you're still waiting for? There are some new releases that I'm not necessarily waiting for them to come out. Well, there's two of those in my December, most anticipated. Let's just go this again. But there are some newer releases that I haven't gotten to yet that I want to get to. On the top of that list is probably Realm of Ash by Tasha Suri. I read the first book in December last year and loved the heck out of it. So it just feels right to get back to it. And again, fantasy feels good in December for me. Question number four, what are three books that you would like to finish reading by the end of the year? And I'm gonna use this as a chance to share some of my currently reading, almost like a Friday reads with you guys. First is a book that I read the first 24 or 25 pages of Loved, but it's physical and I've been working a lot, so I haven't been able to get back to it, but it's Dead Center by Shia Rabowski. He worked in the medical examiner's office in New York City during 9-11 and it was obviously quite an experience. He headed up the body identification project afterward and in the beginning we get a feel of what it was like for him on that day and then it kicks back to his childhood a little bit he grew up in an orthodox jewish household and in new york city and what that was like and what going to jewish school was like for him absolutely fascinating and it's medical like i didn't really read this was my only medical nonfiction for nonfiction november which is just there should have been more i would have liked to read more but anyway need to get through this this next book is one in Japanese that I've been chipping away at and it does fit in my bag sometimes, which helps. It's Otona ni narutte dona koto by Yoshimoto Banana. The title roughly translates as what does it mean to become an adult? And or what is it like to become an adult? You may know Yoshimoto Banana because she has been translated into English. I think her most famous book is probably Kitchen, but there's others as well. And Kitchen was one of the first books I read in Japanese on my own so it has a special place in my heart and it's a great story so good and what i like about yoshimoto's writing is that it cuts through she doesn't make things super pretty with adjectives and adverbs it's pretty not quite stark but she gets to the heart of things quite well i think at least in japanese i don't know what her translations end up sounding like she talks a lot about her own life in this and i didn't know about her life and she went through some pretty tough stuff as a kid so it's been interesting hearing about that and how it affected how she thinks of childhood and, and what it means to grow up and yeah so i'm I don't know if I'm enjoying this. There are some chapters where I'm kind of okay with, but other ones that really get at stuff. Like there was just a chapter on friends and she talks about how the friends that you keep tend to be friends that you have aspirational like conversations with, the ones where you talk about what you wanna do with your life and how you see things going and that you dream with basically. And that friends that are more on a superficial level that you only talk about today or your work um, at the moment and those things don't stick around as much. And that's something I'd never thought of before and never thought of in that way before. So I loved that. Only halfway through at the moment, but it reads quick and the margins are huge. There's kinds of pictures on the bottom. So it reads fairly fast. And this has been my purse read when my purse has room. 
The third book I would like to finish by the end of the year I have on my e-reader is How to Be an Anti-Racist by Dr. Ibram X. Kendi. I started this and I was actually reading a fiction book that I was in the middle of getting, you know, considering DNFing and I needed a break and I came to this and wow the thoughts. I read the introduction and part of the first chapter and he talks about how the opposite of racism isn't not racism. It's anti-racism. That by staying out of the fight, by staying out of the conversation, you are helping perpetuate it. And so I'm like highlighting so much stuff. It is giving me so much to think about and it's very provocative and I'm loving it for that. It's something I'm going to have to go through on the slower side when I have brain. It's not something that I'll be able to relax with at the end of the day because he really makes me think and I'm enjoying it for that. But again, just started. Question number five, do you think that there is a book that could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? There's always that chance. This happened last year where after I filmed my favorite books of the year videos at the end of Vlogmas, in between Christmas and New Year's, I read a book that immediately was went on that list and it was the um, Tasha Suri, the first one, not Realm of Ash, the first one, this one. And that was so amazingly good. So yes, it definitely can happen. Is there a particular book that I think may end up in that slot? I don't know. I'm kind of hoping it's some fantasy that I'll get to, but we'll see. And last question number six, have you already started making reading plans for 2020? I have. And for the past few years, I've done ungoals because I, like I said before, I don't want to make reading an obligation. It's my hobby. It's fun. So most of the time I end up slowly taking on responsibilities and taking on, well, in this sense, like readathons and more things that I want to do. So the end of the year is when I sit back and reevaluate and go, do I really want to do all this again next year? And I'm in that process now and I will talk about all of that in a video later this month. So that's it for the tag. But before I go, I want to shout out some people that are doing Vlogmas this month. It's day three, so I feel like I have a pretty good idea of who's doing it. And these are people that I subscribe to and love. And I think that you may also like. One of the things I like about Vlogmas is it's a great way to be introduced to people and to learn about their taste, both bookish and not, and to get a good, real good feel. Because when you're taping this many videos, you tend to get a little less scripted and a little more loose and it's just a nice way to meet somebody. I will have links to all these lovely people down below. I may link their day one Vlogmas video. That may just be the best way to do it. But in no particular order, this is just the order they were popping up in my sub box. We have Rachel at Kalanadi. She is a SFF booktuber, but she talks about other things as well. She's chill. She's lovely. And I love hearing her, her reviews are incredibly well thought out. So check her out. Next is Lady at Freeform Lady. She seems to be taking the vlog part seriously, which is so much fun. And I've seen parts of her Thanksgiving and there was a big football game that she got um, in the spirit for that was fun to see. So if you're looking for more slice of life along with the reading, check out Lady. Sian and Bert over at Pastori Time are also doing Vlogmas and it's been booky so far. They've talked about novellas in November, I think. They're also reading things that I don't necessarily hear about in other places. So check them out. I'm saying check them out for all these people. You know what to do. Then there's Lindsay over at Lindsay's Book Life. She has a more vloggy style already, so this works out perfectly for her. Watch her talk about her reading as well as show her dogs going to the dog park. Fun stuff. Then Pita over at Comfy Cozy Up. I love Pita. She's one of the people that I love watching while I'm cooking. For some reason, I usually end up watching her. I think it's because she is relaxed in her style. And also she spends time cooking. She shows, uh, she does keto. And so she'll show what she's making and it always looks so delicious. As well as reading many of the same kinds of books I do, as in a bunch of romance with some literary fiction thrown in. Although she's more thrillery than me. Anyway, check her out. Then there's Jacqueline over at Six Minutes For Me. I think this is her first Vlogmas and they're shorter videos. It's a nice quick hit hearing about her current reading or uh, what she's been doing around town, some of the food she's been eating, it all looks so good, enjoying that. And last, because she's being coy, is Doris over at Aldi Books. She says she's thinking about doing Vlogmas while she's putting out a video a day. So she's another person that tends to do a more vloggy style, though not all the time, with a heavy incorporation of her reading into her life. So check her out as well.
I hope I didn't forget anybody. If I forgot you, yell at me down in the comments below. I'll rectify it in a future video. If you have any thoughts or ideas or if you've read any of the books I mentioned in this tag and want to gab about it, that's great. Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new and I will see you in the next video. Bye!